Welcome students. Today we are going to discuss about relative maxima and relative minima of function of two variables. So recall what was the story in function of one variable. So consider the following graph. So in this case, this point was relative maxima so was this point here it was relative minima and here we had absolute minimum and here we also had along with that we had absolute maximum and note that this point was not a local not a local minimum or not a relative minimum so we want to repeat the same kind of argument with function of two variables generalize this idea to function of two variables so again suppose consider the following function so you have function here z equals to say f of x y so you see this local peak here, right? So this point is relative maximum. And these dips here, so this point you get relative minimum. At this point also there's a dip. You see that this is relative minimum. And at this point you get absolute maximum, which is not a relative maximum. And uh, the relative, absolute minimum is also this point is also absolute minimum as well okay so now let's define these things properly so what does it mean by a function having an absolute sorry a relative maximum at a point so at this point on top of this point you have relative maximum so that means let this be x naught y naught and on top of this so we have relative maximum at x naught y naught it means what if you take points sufficiently close to x naught y naught so take all these points these points are in the domain for all these points here if I want to color them, all this point is around here at x naught y naught. Let's mark the center with a red. On top of that, you will see that all the value of function is less than equal to that f of x naught y naught. So that means what? It has relative maximum at x naught y naught if f of x naught y naught is greater than or equal to f of x not for throughout but only in a small it's a local peak in some sense if you think about it as a mountain so for all for all x y in a close neighborhood or for all x y close to x naught y naught so for all x y so this is what it means by relative maximum. Similarly, you can define relative minimum. So let's see that definition here. So F has relative minimum at X naught Y naught. If other way around happens, that means what? If F of X Y is greater than or equal to F of X naught for all X Y that are sufficiently close to X naught Y naught. So it should be true for all X points which are close to X naught Y naught. So this number f of x naught y naught is called relative minimum. Now, what is, so similar to the concept of one variable, we can define absolute maximum. So absolute maximum is the largest value of the function throughout the domain. So this whole thing is a domain and the largest value is happening here. So this will be the absolute maximum. So if your function is defined on region R, then we have absolute maximum at x naught y naught 
if f of x y is less than or equal to f of x not y not for all x y for all x y in r so this is the largest value similarly we have absolute minimum if f of x y is greater than or equal to f of x not y not that means this is the smallest of all value throughout the domain so this concept is a straightforward generalization of concept of one variable all right now the next question we should ask ourselves is how to find out relative maximum and relative minimum absolute maximum and absolute minimum so for our course purpose we will be only interested in relative maximum and relative minimum so so suppose we have a surface which is given by z equals to f of x not sorry f of x y has a relative maximum at x not y not z not okay so let's draw a scenario for this so so this is how the graph will look like in 3d there's a local peak we have absolute maximum at if you want to look at the domain so this point is going to be on top of x not y not and the value z value be z not so now so this will geometrically look like a top of a hill and on top of the hill if you make a surface like that if you balance a surface it will be completely horizontal yeah so that means if i look at this direction in the direction of x not so x not is this is my x not this is my y not either x y axis right so if i fix x not and i cut a sheet like that here when i cut it i will get a curve like this and at this point so when you fix x not you are looking at the partial derivative with respect to y at x not y not all right so this is from the previous lecture so what should happen here the tangent line the 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 partial derivative which is the slope of the tangent line to this red curve should be horizontal similarly if you cut in the other direction you will see that tangent line in in the other direction also will be horizontal that means what at x not y not is also zero so if you look at these cross sections even this cross section let's draw a slightly darker version of this and this also the tangent line will be horizontal that means what so you have like two horizontal tangent lines so we get do f by do x of x not y not is also zero so such a point is called a critical point okay so this is called critical point of this function okay there is another case when you can have a corner like that a pyramid in that case the slope of the tangent line will not exist right because if you cut it in one direction you will have a corner all right so this gives us a way to define the critical point of a function of two variables so so function of two variables so let z be f of x y defined on a region r of r2 which contains your point x not y not so this point x not y not in the domain of the function is called critical point of f if both the partial derivatives fx of x not y not zero and fy of x not y not is zero or at least one of the partial derivatives does not exist that is because of the corner situation so for this course we'll restrict further will only do the cases when the partial derivative what uh, when the partial derivative exists and zero 
So now, as in the single variable case, it is possible for derivative to be zero without being neither maximum or minimum. So we'll need to test these points further. Okay. In only one of the partial derivative is zero, then it's not going to be a critical point. So this is another thing, all right? There is a word and, all right? So it says and. So both of them have to be zero at the same time, or one of them must be, does not exist. Okay. So now, we had for function of one variable, when we had relative maximum and relative minimum, we had a way to classify it. We use the second derivative test. Recall, if C was a critical point, if C is a critical point, point and uh, of, you are looking at the function of one variable for y equals to f of x. And if f double prime c was less than zero, then f of c was what is a relative maximum. And similarly, if f double prime c was greater than zero, then f of c was is a relative is a relative. Now we want to argue about the similar thing for function of two variables. So here's the story. So, so second derivative test for function of two variables. So let z equals to f of x, y be the function of two variables. And suppose the partial derivative are continuous at x naught and we have f of x, x naught, y naught is zero, or, and f y of x naught, y naught is zero. That means that these are the critical points. So x naught, y naught is a, x naught, y naught is a critical point, is a critical point. Now out of that, because we have so many different second order derivatives, we define what is called as discriminant of the function d, which is d of x naught y naught, which is f x x f y y minus f x y square, all evaluated at x naught y naught. Let's call this discriminant d. If d is greater than zero, then you have two cases after that. Then you check f x x of x naught y naught is less than zero, or f y y of x naught y naught is less than zero. If both are less than zero, or sorry, or one of them is less than zero, then we get what? Relative maximum. Okay, less than zero, relative maximum. Similarly, if d is greater than zero still, and f x x or at x naught y naught is greater than zero, or f y y of x naught y naught is greater than zero, then we get a relative minimum. If d is less than zero, then we get neither local maximum nor local minimum. Such a point is called a saddle point. And if d equals to zero, the test fails. Okay, so let's investigate this case three again, especially. So here, so, so if you ever had seen a, a, a horse, a seat on the horse, that seat on the horse is called the saddle. Okay, it's of the following shape. So this is how the saddle which you put on the top of the horse looks like. Now let's look at the following point here. In this direction, if you want, we can basically construct the X and Y axis. So let's construct and let this be corresponding to point x naught y naught. So now if you cut in this direction where y naught is y equals to y naught, then you will get a curve like this. And here the derivative, if you draw the partial derivative, the slope of partial derivative gives you slope of the tangent line of this curve here. If you look at that, it will be zero. Similarly, in the other direction, if you look at that here, there's the tangent line. So one tangent line goes like this. 
the other tangent line goes like that. At this point, both the tangent lines are at respective curves are horizontal. All right. So both the partial derivatives are zero at x naught y naught, the first order partial derivative. However, this point is neither local maximum nor local minimum. Why is that? It is minimum in this direction, right? Sorry, it is maximum in this in this direction because it is largest value. And in this direction, it is the smallest, right? So it is neither local maxima nor local minima. So such a point is called a saddle point. So these are the classification. And of course, D is zero, then the test fails. So now we are able, now we can go ahead and see which of these points are local maximum and local minimum. Right? Let's visualize this again. In this case, you get local maximum. In this case, you get relative maximum. In this case, you'll get a saddle point. It will be maximum in one direction, but minimum in the other direction. Like that. Okay. All right. So let's work on an example. So here. So classify, and of course, the first thing should be fine and classify the critical points of f of x y. So first step to find, the first step to do is to find the critical points of this guy. So we'll take f x and f y and equate them to zero. So first, what is f x? f x of x y, the partial derivative with respect to x. So y is treated as constant, so yes. So we get three x squared plus zero. This so this is my fx, and fy is going to be five y to the power four. I will not declare them zero yet because I need to, them to compute the second derivative, right? So this means what fx of xy equals to zero implies x equals to zero, and fy of xy equals to zero implies y equals to zero so this means what the only critical point is when both are zero which is zero comma zero so this is the only critical point now we need to classify this critical point so for that we have to compute the discriminant so discriminant is fxx fyy minus fx y square. So first we need to compute the discriminant. So what is fxx? Again, derivative of this. So this is going to be 6x. What is fyy? Derivative of this with respect to y, which is going to be 5 times. So 20y minus fxy. So we'll take this guy and take derivative of this with respect to y or take fy and take derivative of this with respect to x. The Claret's theorem tells us that the mixed partial derivatives are going to be the same. So this is going to be, what is the derivative of this with respect to x? So it's zero, so zero square. This is gonna be 120 xy. So now let's look at d of zero, zero, the discriminant, which is going to put, substituting x equals to zero and y equals to zero. So we get zero. So what does it mean? It means our test fails. So in this case, if you go back, D equals to zero means the test fails. So this test is inconclusive, all right? So now, can we basically say anything else out of it? I mean, here, the second derivative test won't work, but we can try to see the following. Look at the cross section when X is zero. So when X is zero, you'll get what? f of zero y equals to y to the five, which has no extremum at y equals to zero, right? Why is that? See, because y to the five more or less looks like this. It looks like y cube roughly, but more flattened early on and then grows much faster. So this is how y to the five looks like. And this point corresponds to x zero zero, right? And you see that this point is neither local maximum nor local minimum because there are points which are lower than that value and higher than that value. <coughs> so zero, zero, zero is a saddle point, right? 
So similarly, another way to look at this is the following. If x, y is greater than zero, then f of x, y is going to be positive, positive. So positive power three is positive. Y to the power of five is positive. So if we add two numbers, positive, so we get positive. So f of x, y is greater than zero. However, if x, y is less than zero, this would imply f of x, y is less than zero because negative cube is negative. Negative to the power of five is negative. So this means there are points of both kinds, negative and positive, close to zero, zero. So hence it must be saddle point. Okay. So please do the problems from the 7.48 and 7.50. All right, let's move ahead. Again, let's find out, classify the critical points. So first step is to find the critical points. So let's compute the critical points. So we have, again, we'll take fx, which is going to be 4x cubed, fy, which is going to be 4y cubed. So this equals to zero gives me x equals to zero and y equals to zero. So zero, zero is the only critical point, critical point. Now we need to check what kind of critical point it is. Is it a saddle point? It is, is it relative mix, minimum or is it relative maximum? So for that, we need to compute the discriminant D. So what is FXX? FXX is a derivative of this with respect to X. So 12 X square. Similarly, FYY is going to be 12 Y square. And FXY is taking derivative of this with respect to X. There's no X here, so it will be zero. So in this case, we get what discriminant at zero, zero is going to be zero again. So we cannot get any information whatsoever. Now in this case, you can see that F of zero, zero is zero. Yeah, at zero, the value is zero, zero. But F of X, Y is greater than zero for all X, Y here because it's power four plus power four. So they are gonna be greater than or equal to zero if both of them are not zero. So this means that zero, zero, zero is the minimum point. And it's an absolute minimum point as well, but that's not what we're going to discuss at the moment. Please look at the following problem, extreme of a, on an elliptic paraboloid and optimizing volume of the box. Okay. Okay, so these are the classification where the, the, the second derivative test did not work. Now let's look at the following problem. So we have f of x, y is e to the power minus x squared plus y squared. So again, first we compute the critical point. So fx is going to be derivative of this. So derivative of e to the something is e to that, same thing, multiplied by extra d by dx of minus x squared plus y squared. Why? Chain rule. So we get e to the minus x squared plus y squared inside the bracket. Derivative of this with respect to x is going to be minus 2x. Similarly, the function looks so symmetric in x and y. So fy is going to be e to the minus x squared plus y squared times 2y with a minus sign. So now fx is zero implies what? Now note that e to the exponential functions never become zero. So this means that minus 2x must be zero. So this would mean x equals to zero. Similarly, fy equals to zero would imply that y equals to zero. So therefore again, we get zero, zero is the only critical point. Now let's compute uh, the discriminant D. For that, we need fxx. So take this guy. So it's a partial derivative of fx, which is e to the minus x squared plus y squared times minus 2x. Now, this guy is a function of x, this guy is a function of x, and they are multiplied together. So we'll have to use the product rule. So we get minus x squared plus y squared times d by dx of minus 2x 
plus minus 2x times d by dx of what? e to the power minus x squared plus plus. Now, you don't have to compute this again. This was already computed here. So this is going to be e to the minus x squared plus y squared times minus 2. And this is going to be plus 4x squared times e to the power x squared plus y squared. So you can take e to the power minus x squared plus y squared common. You can also take minus 2 common. What is left in the bracket? 1 minus 2x squared. So this is your fx x. Similarly, you can compute fyy, which is going to be this. And note that the function is so symmetric that I can quickly see the error here. This has to be y square. Okay, so there's a mistake there. And fxy turns out to be this guy. Do this computation, please. So this would mean that d of 0, 0 is what? d of 0, 0 is fxx0, which is going to be, if we put 0 in this, I get minus what? Let's see that. So fxx0, 0, 0 is going to be minus 2, right? Because this will become 1 minus 2 times this guy times 1. So fyy F -Y -Y of 0, 0 is minus 2 again. And f x, y of this guy is going to be, 0, 0 is going to be, this guy is already 0, right? Because there's an x, there's a y, so this will become 0. So d is going to be, you're substituting 0, 0 here, right? So minus 2 times minus 2 minus 0. So minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. So 4 is greater than 0, right? So d is greater than 0. So now this is a different case. So let's see what does our guideline tell us. Our guideline tells us if d is greater than 0, then we need to check the sign of xx, fxx or fyy. So d is greater than 0 and fxx is also less than 0 because it was minus 2. So in this case, we get relative maximum. So we get 0, 0 is what is relative maximum. So what is the value of the output of the function at 0, 0? So we get f of 0, 0. So put 0 in this, so we get what? e to the power zero plus zero e to the power zero is one so therefore the point of relative maximum is x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate is one is the relative maximum so now so this is how you would go about it okay now let's look at another problem so here you have f of x, y equals to x cubed plus 3y squared minus y cubed plus 3xy. So first find the critical point and then classify the critical point. Again, the steps are same. So first step is to find the critical points. So for that, you will take fx, which is going to be 3x squared, derivative of 3y with respect to x is 0, minus 3. We get fy is 3 minus 3y squared. So this implies fx equals to 0 gives me x squared minus 1 equals to 0, which gives me x equals to plus or minus 1. Similarly, fy equals to 0 gives me 1 minus y squared equals to 0, which means y equals to plus or minus 1. Right, so they are together true means what? What are the possibilities? First one is one, the second one is one. First one is one, second one is minus one. Then we have first one is minus one, second one is one, and then we have one. So we got four critical points. Uh -huh. So this is the interesting part. So we have four critical points. Now we need to basically make a table because it's it would be too much of writing if we have to write the whole thing over and over again so now let's compute fxx so fxx is going to be 6x fyy is going to be minus 6y and fxy is taking either fy and taking derivative of that with respect to x 
there's no x on this side, so it's zero. Or other way to compute f x y is take this guy, derivative of this with respect to y is zero again. So because there's no y there, so we get f x y is zero. So what is my d function really? So I think it's a good idea to look at d of x y as f x x six x f y y minus six y, which is minus thirty six x y. So this is my d. So minus 36 x y. The first thing to compute is the discriminant. So let's take, let's start from the first one. When I put minus one here, minus one here, I get what? Minus minus cancels out. So we get minus 36 and that is less than zero. So that is going to be a saddle point. If you look at the classification, if D is less than zero, we get saddle point. Now let's look at minus one, one. In that case, what do we get? In that case, we get D is 36. So D is greater than zero. That means we have to now check further to see if it is relative maxima or relative minima. So note that FXX is going to be less than zero. So if you look at the guideline, this is going to be relative maxima. Similarly, let's look at one minus one. Again, we'll get D equals to 36, but FXX is going to be six, which is greater than zero. So it's gonna be relative minimum. And when you put one, one, you get again D as minus 36, which is less than zero. So it's a saddle point. So this is how the complete classification is done. Okay, so, so this is about it. Uh, there are some problems you should focus on. Try to do these problems, these problems. Sorry, this is already done here. Try to do these problems as well. Okay, thank you for your attention. Bye now.